Is it just Paimon, or is there something weird about those hilly churls over there? Paimon thinks so too. We've seen plenty of hilly churls before, and they're always the bad guys. But this is different. Uh oh. This is right by the Wangshu Inn, too. Oh, the guests are in great danger. Now that we've seen it, if we don't do anything about it, Paimon will feel really guilty. <sighs> Let's go take care of them. than shells. Shall we go say hi? <laughs> Hello! Allow us to introduce ourselves. This is... Please, if you're here to thank me, there's no need. Cleansing the world of evil is the duty of the Adepti. Think nothing of it. I certainly don't. Wait. Who are you? One had assumed you were followers, but on closer inspection, it seems that we have not met. My name's Paimon, and this is my sidekick. One sees. One, too, shall introduce oneself, for it is good manners to comply. <clears throat> the one before you is the Adeptus, Master of Stars, though one is better known to one's followers as... Star Snatcher. One descended from one's mountain abode to cleanse the world of evil, whereupon fate saw fit that our paths should cross. Now, tell me that which you wish for. Our wishes? Paimon thought that the Adepti and Leela were just really good in battle. You mean you can grant people's wishes too? <laughs> there are different levels of Adepti. Are not the stars loftier than the mountains, clouds, and moon? Yet, it is unbecoming of an Adepti to boast of one's powers. One would have you first speak to one's followers, and only then make your verdict. Have you seen the Master of Stars in action? His power truly hails from the Divine. I believe that now. There is finally some hope for my ailing father. Watching him use his magic is all the proof you need. A true adeptus, no doubt about it. Not long ago, I sought some medicine from him on behalf of my ailing father. The difference with Boo Boo Pharmacy's prescriptions was like night and day, I tell you. Once it was boiled and ready, it gave off this really ethereal mist. Seemed pretty adeptal to me. Hmm. <laughs> Could have also been because there was mist flower in it, though. Adepti medicine is surely the most potent. <laughs> My father will recover soon. I just know it. Sure, you have to make some sacrifices if you seek help from an Adeptus like the Master of Stars. I had to give a few antiques as offerings. But my father's life is worth much more than a few old relics, right? The Millilith don't really need to do shifts when the Master of Stars is around, do they? Ugh. <sighs> I'm a merchant, and I had an especially valuable batch of goods that needed transporting recently. So I asked the Master of Stars if he would make the journey with me, as presumptuous as that was. Uh, reason being, monsters run a mile as soon as he so much as holds up his talisman. Uh, we didn't have the slightest bit of trouble the whole journey. It didn't come cheap, of course, but... Then, soliciting the services of a god is a monumental affair. Uh, just look at the rite of dissension. So, I can accept it, but I doubt that most from outside of Liu would be willing to.
Finally, a life full of hope and purpose. Oh, are you believers too? After my fiance had been left, I cried every day. But then I turned to the Master of Stars for help. At his suggestion, I started burning paintings of my fiance and casting the ashes into the ocean at sunrise. I can't explain it, but it really worked. <sighs> I know in my heart that he'll return. This is not some sort of positive thinking trick. I'm certain of it. I'm so overjoyed that I gave a portion of my wedding budget to the Master of Stars as an offering. After all, if not for him, I wouldn't be getting my fiance back, in which case I wouldn't need it anyway. What do you think? One's adherents may exaggerate a little, but they speak from the heart. <laughs> Surely you jest. There was once a senior adeptus, Xie Wu Liang, known to the people as Liang Zi. He said this, All things are connected. That which mortals call imagination is merely the bridge betwixt the spiritual and the material. In other words, their wishes are already on the path of transitioning into reality. Does this make things clearer? Uh, nope. It makes them way more complicated. But basically what you're saying is that their wishes can come true, right? Indeed. You are perceptive, my diminutive friend. Okay. Um, so we also have one other question. Oh? You need but ask. Hmm. Indeed. It would be inappropriate for one to remove one's mask. One wanders among mortals, doing good and cleansing evil. One reveals not one's visage to avoid further disturbance to this realm than is necessary. Ah, got it. Now then, what are your wishes? One senses that a tragic tale lies behind this wish. So be it. This wish is not beyond one's power to grant. But first, one must see some proof of your faith. What's that supposed to mean? The way of the Adepti cannot be grasped from words alone. One must seek the profound truths that lie beyond them. Should you fail to perceive one's hidden meaning, then regrettably, one may lend you no aid. What do we do? Python doesn't understand him at all. Oh, that's right! Some of those believers mentioned that they had to pay a pretty sum for the Adeptus' help, didn't they? Well, Paimon's not forking over any Mora, uh, and we don't have anything valuable enough on us. You don't even have a vision. Hey, why don't we make him a tasty snack? No one can resist the temptation of good food, can they? Yep, a tasty snack is sure to work. <laughs> why don't we head over to Wanwen Bookhouse and see if they got any new recipes in?
So, you'd like a copy of Yaksha's The Guardian Adepti? Yes. Here, and keep the change. Oh, aren't you generous? Thank you for your patronage. Hey, isn't that... um... Star Snapper? What a coincidence running into him again! Did you hear the name of the book he just bought? Was it Yaksha's The Guardian Adepti? Uh, well, anyway, it was definitely a book about the Adepti. Why would an Adeptus want to buy a book about himself? Really? What's so fishy about him? So, what you're trying to say is that he can't grant people's wishes? Hmm... Paimon thinks we should check out that book. Maybe we'll find out something about this guy that we can use. So, are you buying or not? Hey there! We'd like a copy of Yaksha's The Guardian Adepti. Do you have one in stock? Huh. Since when did that old chestnut become a bestseller? You're a rare breed of youngster if this is what you like to read. But you should be able to find a copy somewhere on that shelf over there. So, are you buying or not? This is the one! Let's see what it's all about, shall we? In ancient times, Liyue was a land of misery, where the shadow of evil loomed large. As slain gods festered, their vengeful wrath cursed the world, manifesting in infernal forms. When demons stirred, miasmas, monsters and mutations infested the land. Then Rex Lapis summoned the Yakshas to vanquish the demons. They swore an oath. Restore order through slaughter. Purge evil through battle. To this, we dedicate our lives. Eons of bloodshed later, karmic debt weighed upon them. Phantom wrath seeping into their broken souls. They went mad with fear. Turned on each other. Or succumbed to the darkness. Of the five foremost Yakshas, death came to three while the fourth vanished without a trace. In the millennia since, one conqueror of demons remains the sole surviving Yaksha in the mortal realm. And only on moonlit nights, in the glow from Guyon, and in the sound of the Dihua flute, is his memory preserved. is about the Yakshas, a group of Adepti who defend Lyue. Hmm, seems like a pretty niche topic. Was there anything that stood out to you? So, there used to be five main Yakshas, but supposedly only one of them is still alive today. Do you think that it could have anything to do with that Star Snatcher guy? Hmm... No, surely not. He doesn't exactly give off the impression that he's been suffering for thousands of years. The book says that the wrathful spirits of the gods defeated during the Archon War can sometimes cause plagues, monsters, or mutations. All of which sound pretty horrendous. Oh, hey, wait a second. Paimon wonders if... Do you think those super evil hilly churls we saw earlier were the mutations that the book's talking about? The book says that the Yakshas, after fighting against the wrath of the gods for thousands of years, became bound by karma. Poisoned by the hateful thoughts of the gods, the Yakshas would often descend into indescribable fits of terror, rage, or agony. 
It's so tragic. After everything they went through in all their years of protecting Lila, they got no reward and had to deal with so much suffering instead. Yep, Paimon thinks we've already summed up all the key points. So back to the matter at hand. The things we need answers on are one, where did those super evil looking hilly trolls come from? And two, what does Star Snatcher have to do with the Yakshas, right? Now to head back to where this all started and commence our investigation. Let's part the fog of mystery that hangs over Dway and Karst and let the truth shine through in its full glory. <laughs> to be honest, Paimon actually hopes he is a real Adeptus. Uh, his exorcism technique seemed real enough, at least. Hmm. But if we get our hopes up, there's further for them to come down. So, it makes sense to investigate thoroughly first, just to be sure. Alright, let's head back to Wangshu Inn! <laughs> Flee at my command, foul demon. <laughs> Didn't the sigil of permission do anything? Has the evil aura of these hilly churls grown in intensity? Sigil of permission, huh? Now why does that sound familiar? Right! It's a keepsake of the Adepti, so it must still contain traces of their power! <gasps> no wonder he was able to scare those monsters away earlier! What are you two babbling on about? One is merely underslept, meaning that one's adeptal power is not in full flow. Were one but given another opportunity... Well, as it happens, there goes another bunch of evil hilly churls over there. Should we leave them to you, then? I... uh... uh one suddenly feels ill at ease. Surely one has overexpended one's adeptal powers. Otherwise, one would surely purge these infernal beings at once. <sighs> so you were just bragging after all. We were right to be suspicious. <sighs> Come on, traveler. Looks like it's up to us. Use your elemental sight and hunt them down. <laughs> Right. Oh, it's that conqueror of demons again. No wonder. I'm always... It's you. I remember you. I was purging some living beings that had been tainted by the demonic. It would appear that I have caused you some trouble. Huh? He isn't usually this polite. What's going on? But you are exercising demons! How is that causing trouble? That is because the changes that occurred in these monsters stem from me. Or more precisely, from the karma I have accumulated. Mutations? Karma? Oh, does that mean... Yeah, 
Paimon remembers that Xiao is also called the Vigilant Yaksha, isn't he? <gasps> so... So that means... Oh... <gasps> Poor Xiao! <laughs> I see. You must mean that piece of literati fanfiction from a few hundred years ago. <laughs> All things are impermanent, and to exist is to suffer. We Yakshas have no need of sympathy or tears. My comrades who have passed on would see your tears as a stain upon their legacy. Oh, uh, I'm unsorry. It matters not. In any case, I am on my way to purge a cavern of demonic influence, so we shall part ways here. Wait! Take us with you! We'll be a big help! Paimon promises! No need. I am used to fighting alone. And in any case, these mutations originated from me to begin with. Well then... Oh! Consider it Paimon's parents for being accidentally rude just now! Please? Well, I... Uh, come on, then. Um, so, Xiao, you've been suffering from the bad karma all this time? Suffering is my price to pay for eons of endless slaughter. I have come to accept this. But in recent years, other living things have suffered when the burden should be mine alone to bear. I must reflect on this. I will use the ritual known as the Bane of All Evil to relieve this place of its karma. You must remain calm. Do not allow yourself to be affected by the lingering wrath of bygone gods. Disappear! by such a name. So he is a fraud! Well, we'll continue this discussion later. You should focus on your battle for now. Huh? 
It is good that we came here. An unusual number of living things had fallen under infernal influence. Had we not arrived in good time, the consequences would have been unthinkable. Now, this Star Snatcher you speak of, what is the situation? Ooh, Paimon will tell you. An Adeptus who grants wishes. To think that people could be so easily deceived by such blatant lies. As an Adeptus, do you have the power to grant wishes, Yao? The Liyue of yesteryear would never ask the Adepti for boons unearned. Millennia ago, the ancestral people of Liyue asked for nothing more than the strength to defend the land they called their home. Uh, to be honest, an Adepti who grants people's wishes is probably more appealing to people nowadays. However feeble people nowadays may be, they are not my concern. I concern myself only with following Rex Lapis's original decree. Oops. Hyman spoke without thinking again. Oh, uh, one more thing? That fake Adeptus has a sigil of permission. It's what he uses to exercise demons. Wait. Truly? <laughs> Fool. Exercising demons without exterminating them. It is no wonder they have been congregating here. If this continues, things may spiral out of even my control. We must confiscate his sigil of permission. Great minds think alike! Paimon agrees. We've got to show that trickster what you get for trying to fool us! And it just so happens that we've got a real Adeptus with us, too! If Xiao were to teach Star Snatcher a lesson, you can bet he'll never dare to pose as an Adeptus ever again! No. I only slay demons. I do not kill mortals. Who said anything about killing him? <laughs> it would certainly benefit Liyue if we could convince him to cease his wicked ways. I possess an art called Dream Trawler. It is normally used to separate the soul from the body, that one might cultivate oneself in a waking dream. But it can also be used to call forth the spirits of others. Whoa! Now that's a real Adepti art for ya! A ritual must be performed for this art to be used. Assist me in gathering a few items. A sensor, seven lamps, and something to reduce the temperature. Reduce the temperature? Oh, some mist flowers will probably do, right? But as for the sensor and the seven lamps... Hmm... Probably not the kinds of things are gonna just stumble across in the wild. Do you know of the two Yaksha statues that stand guard beside a merchant road on the southern face of Mount Tianhung? The ancestors of the people of Liyue built shrines there to honor the Yakshas. You should still be able to find some ceremonial items there. Once you have found them, meet me at the Yaksha statues after nightfall, and I will teach you how to use this art.
The spirit soars the mountains high, while the body rests as the world goes by. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but... Well, I'll be. Isn't that something? A pair walk into a shrine, neither to seek nor worship gods or adepti, but to pilfer the tools of worship for their own ends. <laughs> rude to ask, but we just need them for a short while. Honest! For the Dream Trawler ritual, I trust. <gasps> How'd you know that? I have been in the shrine for far longer than you would expect. Perhaps as a reward for my faithfulness, I have been endowed with some understanding of the Adepti Arts. Wow. Hyman's never heard of that happening before. Ah, uh, it matters not. Take what you need. It is a fortuitous thing that these items may be of service to you. They serve little purpose here, in any case. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing that you need concern yourself with. Please, take what you wish. run down as the shrine so next we just need to grab the seven star lamps right the sooner we start the sooner we'll be done now, but let's say bye to that guy before we leave, shall we? Huh? Where'd he go? He was right here! I had presumed that once you had acquired what you came for, you would forget about me and simply be on your way. My physical form ceased to exist over a thousand years ago. What you witnessed earlier was an illusion, created by the Adepti art known as Mortal Lingering. Now that you have taken the Seven Star Lamps and Sensor used in the Mortal Lingering ritual, my form is no longer visible to you. I was once a junior in the Order of the Yakshas, Bestowed with the name Pervases by Rex Lapis himself. Yet my strength failed, and I was slain in battle. Today is the anniversary of my death. My last wish was to see a modern Liyue, and so I took the liberty of performing this ritual here. That aside, you were sent here by the Conqueror of Demons, were you not? So, you two know each other then? I sense his aura upon you. That and the heavy burden of his karma. <sighs> Even after all these millennia, 
He still must endure such tremendous suffering. I am truly ashamed. Don't say that, Pervasis. You sacrificed your life for Leela, didn't you? Life is a precious thing, yes. But when I think of the burden that the Conqueror of Demons must bear... <sighs> death seems to me to have been the easy way out. A selfish indulgence, even. Pervasis. <laughs> I apologize. Birthdays are joyful occasions. But by the same token, it is hard not to be melancholy on the anniversary of one's death. The mortal lingering will not last much longer. Take care, you two. And please pass on my regards to the Conqueror of Demons. <sighs> if only I could taste some authentic grilled ticker fish once more. By wave and storm, I hunt for fish. By wind and snow, I slay evil. Huh? Looks like he's gone then. Paimon really hopes that at least someone will remember Pervasis the Yaksha. We should get going. But let's come back here and make an offering sometime. <laughs> Worthless! Have you gathered the items for the ritual? Hmm... This sensor... and these lamps... Their designs are flawless. Almost as if they were made specifically for use in the Adepti Arts. Where did you come by them? Oh! And, um, she says hi! Pervases. <sighs> yes. This does have the hallmarks of something Pervases might do. As I thought, it seems that he could not leave Liyue behind, either. I hope that its present state will allow him to rest in peace. <laughs> well then, let us begin preparing for the ritual. Place the censer in the middle, and surround it with the seven star lamps. Adorn the area with the items of abject cold. Once this is done, we shall proceed. Yes, this will do. Now, the next step is the key to performing Dream Trawler. There are four steps to performing this ritual. Offering incense, meditation, incantation, and loosing an arrow. That... seems like a real rigmarole. Adepti arts are the product of millennia of study by Adepti. Do not dismiss their mystical workings as rigmarole. Failure to take this seriously could cause the technique to devour one's own body, or cause the spirit to be sundered from one's flesh permanently. <laughs> Stop talking! I'm sorry! When offering the incense, we place the incense into the censer with reverence for Rex Lapis in our hearts. Meditation is to empty ourselves of trivial thoughts, and to focus on the target of the art we are performing. Then we shall recite the incantation in a loud voice. Devayaksha, bring forth sin. Finally, we will loose an arrow towards each of the Yaksha statues to enlist their authority for our contract. 
If all goes well, Star Snatcher's soul will be brought forth shortly. If you have no other questions, let us begin. Then we meditate. Ugh. Paima really doesn't want to think about that fraud. enough. Leave the rest to me. You two get ready to greet him. Where is one? Huh? You two look familiar. What's with one's body? One feels light. Weightless. An adepti art? <laughs> you dare don the guise of an adeptus in one's presence. But as for the matter of one's present location... One could have sworn that one was dozing off to sleep at Wang Shu Inn not a moment ago. Wait, that must be it. Of course it must. <laughs> As expected of an adeptus such as oneself. One must indeed be in a dream. Ugh, there's no helping this guy, is there? Huh? What is the meaning of this? Do you truly think that one will permit such insolence in one's own dreams? All right, time to take him down a peg. <laughs> Let's play! Ugh, such impertinence. Where are one's followers when one needs them? Please stop! I surrender! I surrender! <sighs> No! No, never again. You... You almost killed me. Oh, how did I ever have the misfortune to meet you two? Please, great adept, I spare my life. I won't do this ever again, I swear it. We did call your spirit here, but we're not adepti. He, however, is. You deceive the masses with quackery. Masquerade as an adeptus. Exorcise demons without exterminating them and display a callous lack of regard for life. One day, you will reap that which you have sown. For those who invite the Infernal into their lives, there is no redemption. Uh, I... You're... Seems like Shell's got him scared stiff. Oh, great Adeptus. Might I ask your name? It really is you. It's truly you. Never in my life did I imagine that I might meet the conqueror of demons, the vigilant Yaksha himself. You know about Xiao? Of course. My grandfather was a folklorist. I learned the tales of the conqueror of demons at his knee. To this day, I am an avid collector of books concerning the Yakshas. But ever since I discovered a sigil of permission while rummaging through my grandfather's personal effects, at first, I was just imitating the Adepti for fun. But slowly, I began to stray further and further from the righteous path. Huh. So to sum you up, you're Xiao's biggest fan? Y yes. <laughs> Thank you both for allowing me to witness the conqueror of demons in the flesh. It's like a dream come true. Uh, that wasn't quite our intention. Oh, great conqueror of demons, please allow me to swear this oath before you. I swear to turn away from evil, to live an honest life, and to never again stain the name of the Adepti. I will remember your oath. Now go. Thank you. 
A thousand thanks for your forgiveness, and for all that you have done for Lear. He seemed very earnest when he was making that oath there. Guess he won't be tricking anyone anymore. Oh, wait. We haven't gotten the sigil of permission back yet. Let's head over to Wang Shuin first thing tomorrow and look for him. Star Snatcher. Hmm. You mean the false adeptus who wore a mask? He signed in here under the name Wang Ping An. He's already checked out. He said he wished to go on a solo pilgrimage. Ah, yes. He also requested that I give this letter to a traveler who journeys together with a talking fairy, should they come asking for him. Talking fairy? Who's that? Well, anyway, you must be the traveler. Here's the letter. How? Strange that he would leave a letter for us. Is this the final attempt to fool us, maybe? Come on, open it! Paimon's curious! Huh? Seems like he actually left us a few nice trinkets. Along with... <gasps> Woohoo! The Sigil of Permission! Paimon hasn't met a bad guy like him in a long time. Yeah. Anyway, let's go take the Sigil of Permission to Xiao, shall we? Let me guess where you're... permission back. Do you want to take it? You have my thanks. May I take your order, sir? One grilled ticker fish. Certainly. We'll prepare it for you immediately. Huh. No almond tofu this time? Well, that's not like you. Ticker fish was Pervasi's favorite dish. I just wanted to see how it tastes. Huh. <sighs> By wave and storm, I hunt for fish. By wind and snow, I slay evil. <laughs> Was there anything else? I... am accustomed to eating alone. Aha! Uh -huh. And so, Detective Paimon and the trusty traveler solved the case and quietly slipped away.